today's video, I'm going to show you a very simple text animation in the Unreal Engine motion design tools using 5.4 Preview. It is the preview version, so there are some little quirks and bugs, and I'm going to show you some of those as well as we explore and discover this new awesome tool in Unreal Engine 5. Let's go. So I have an empty scene in Unreal Engine 5 here. And to get started with the motion design tools, the first thing you need to do is make sure that the plugin is enabled. I don't know if it's available on Mac yet, but you just type in motion design and make sure this is checked. Turn it on, you will have to restart Unreal. Then when you look at your window, you'll see a new button, the motion design button right here. And then we also have a new mode called motion design. Let's go ahead and hit the motion design button and it'll basically deactivate because I was already playing with it. And let's just turn it back on. So now we are in motion design mode. So the difference between not motion design mode is it's the traditional Unreal Engine viewport, but if we turn on motion design mode, it turns on other things like this border of uh, measurement around our frame. We also get some extra options like in After Effects where we can see, make a mask mode. We have some uh, spang to our grid, and we also get our motion design mode over here. Now, my findings is that it's both creating a 3D and 2D world. So if we go ahead and navigate to the very top left, we can see this button called Create Defaults. And with this, we can go ahead and select it, and it's going to spawn a bunch of different actors that are traditional to the regular Unreal Engine workflow. It's going to add a directional light, which is basically a sun, a skylight, which is going to fill in a lot of our extra shadows, uh, a post-process volume, a camera, a root, as in like a, a world center sort of thing. So let's just go ahead and hit spawn with the create defaults. And it's going to give us this outliner up here, which is our motion design outliner. And it is going to populate that camera, our post-process volume, our skylight, and our directional light. We'll also get a sequencer down here, and this is going to be for our motion design sequence. This sequence is built so then we can actually do our animation and create stuff. So with all that said, if we take a look at some of the building blocks of this right here, we have this camera. It's called an Ava Cine Camera Actor. The project motion design used to be called Avalanche, so I'm assuming that's why this object is called Ava. And if we go into the details panel right here, we can see that the transform properties is locked. So the best way to think about it is that we're technically in a 3D scene, but because the camera is locked, we can't move around. Obviously we don't have any lights, so I can't really demonstrate this, but let's go ahead and add an object. So in our motion design mode up here, we have this 2D shapes, 3D shapes and actors. In my last video, we covered some of the cloners and effectors. Let's just think about the 2D stuff right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a rectangle and it's basically like making a solid. It's gonna give us this grid right here. We can go ahead and just click and drag and fill up our frame like so. And I'm sure there's a way in which we can just make a background a little bit easier, but in my findings, this is the best way I have found to make a background like this. And we can just scale it up so it fills up our scene. Now, this rectangle is now in our motion design outliner. If we look at our regular Unreal Engine outliner, it is also there, but let's just stick with the motion design tools for now. In the details panel in the lower right hand corner of my viewport, you can look at the different types of properties we get for this rectangle. This includes the material. Is it going to be based on the material designer, which we'll cover in another video, or just a simple color? Or is it actually creating an asset like geometry or a 3D object that we can play with? But the default is simple, so we'll keep it as simple. And then if we also go into our lights right here, we can go ahead and add a light. And the reason why I'm showing this is if we go ahead and add a point light in right here, we go ahead and select that light. And if we move it, on the X value, we can see that as we're pulling it back, we're bringing it closer to the camera, it's illuminating the background here. Now, I will say it's a little weird right now that the Unreal Engine motion design tools, the X, which is the red value, is actually going forward and backwards towards the camera. That's typically the Z in other software like Cinema 4D or I think the Y in Blender. Anyways, long story short, in most software, the X is the left and right, but in the Unreal Motion Design tools as of March 27th, 2024, the X is the back and forth. So that's worth considering. But the reason why I brought in a light here is that if we go ahead and go to the rectangle, we have this use unlit material. And basically, if we set this to 
on, it's going to set the color to exactly this. It's going to be unlit. It's not going to be affected by the lights. Now, there's another little quirk that I've noticed with this is that when we use the create default defaults, if we go into the color of our solid here, we can see that it is pure white, 100% white, but it looks a little off white right now. Now, there's some Unreal stuff happening in, on the back end, but generally my workflow for things like this in Unreal is I would use a post-process volume. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically an adjustment layer in After Effects affecting all of your footage. So for this, we have the AVA post-process volume here. And if we scroll down into the details panel, we can see that we have exposure and it's already setting some exposure here, but it's using exposure compensation of zero. If we set this to one, it's now gonna make this background pure white so there's some weird quirks and stuff happening and i'm still doing some tests but uh, that's something to consider if you are looking for pure white and you're not getting that try checking out the post process volume or your adjustment layer so to speak so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and go into the rectangle here and i'm going to set this to a slight off black like so just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and center up this light in my scene, zero and zero. And now if I set this rectangle to a lit material instead, we get this cool little vignette effect sort of thing. If I go into my light, I can increase the intensity or bring it down, but I'm gonna bring up the radius and that should have it affect a little bit more of the scene. You know, as I think about this, I'm gonna do this a slightly different way. So instead, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the light. We have this solid color, it is technically lit. And if we hold Control L, we're gonna be able to change our light. And this property or this command, Control L, and this little gizmo that we get in the lower right-hand corner of my viewport is my directional light. That's my sunlight. So if you're unfamiliar with how lighting in Unreal works, we will typically get a, a big directional light that will light a big environment like a, a landscape or something like that. So with all that said, let's go ahead and add some text really quick, just to demonstrate some of the cool new tools that we get inside the Unreal Engine motion design tools. So in the actors panel of the motion design mode, we have a text actor right here. Let's go ahead and drop it in. And here's another thing that's worth considering. If you take a look at the text object and we go down here, if you have an Adobe account, you typically have access to some of the uh, Adobe fonts. And one of my favorites that I typically use for all of my work is Proxima Nova. But if I go into the search bar and type Proxima Nova, it doesn't show up. And the reason why is that this font library is pulled from your operating system, but the Adobe font library is somewhere hidden on your computer and it is don't, don't mess with that. Just wait until Adobe fixes that. I'm hoping they fix it. They really should fix it because I won't consider using a lot of motion design stuff until I can use my font because branding is important. So let's just go ahead and use any other font that I have. I like the game Mass Effect and this is one of my favorite fonts for that. So we can go ahead and add our text here. We can go ahead and change this text and we'll call this Mass Effect just for fun. And in the text properties, if we go down to the layout, we have our alignment. This is something that I've been looking for for a very long time in the Unreal Engine motion design tools. And I am super excited that we actually have text in our scene. Now, from here, we can see that we have our text and it's uh, slightly off center for some reason. Did I add an extra space? Why is it, why are you doing a weird thing? Let's go to my camera, that's where it should be text actor aha it's because it's not actually quite centered there we go that was me being a little silly right there but now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the animation tools in the avalanche builder so if we go ahead and take this text tool drop it into our sequencer down here we're going to add our text here but we don't have any keyframes right now we can go ahead and add a track and this track will allow us to pick almost any property of the object and add some extra animation to it. My favorite way to animate text for a lot of my motion graphics videos is a sort of like tracking effect or it's basically separating all the letters all at once. It kind of looks cinematic. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up to a slightly higher value here. And then if I go ahead and scale it down just a touch, let's just fill it in the scene right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a keyframe on my kerning. I'm gonna go forward, let's say 12 frames, 13 frames, 
kind of like that. Let's bring down the kerning just a touch or a little bit more. And then we'll go to the very end of my animation at frame 240 and we'll set this down to like a much more normal value. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and play this back. Let's go to the very beginning. We get a cool little push together. Now, if we wanted to animate this and really fine tune the animation curve, we can go ahead and select the keyframes here and we can go into the curve editor right here and take a look at our curves and we can see that we can adjust this down here. Now the curves in Unreal have always been a little funky to me but I'm slowly getting better at them. If I go ahead and look at these options up here, it'll allow us to adjust our curves so that we can get the exact look that we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this out. And if we go ahead and select this button right here, it's going to break it so that we can actually adjust the length of our curve like so. I'm gonna go into this keyframe and uh, just select that button once again and pop it right there. So now if we play that back, we get a really subtle sort of like kerning effect. Now my favorite thing to do for a lot of my motion graphic is I will also do a little bit of a camera push or I could scale up this text. But the problem with that the Avalanche camera actor is that it's locked. We can't change it at all because it's pretending we're in a 2D view. So what I would do in this scenario is I would go ahead, right click on the camera and let's see. Are we allowed to change the transform property? Let's see, it, it doesn't seem like it. Let's go ahead and add this camera. Aha, we can go into this option right here and unlock it, sweet. So let's go ahead and unlock it here. And now if we go into the Avalanche camera actor, we can go ahead and change our position of our camera like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop this into my sequencer as well. So now I can go ahead and make a keyframe right here. And this is actually my end keyframe. So I'm gonna take this keyframe that I just made, bring it to let's say 192 like so. I'll jump to the very beginning and then I will just pull back on the X just a little bit like so. Let's go ahead and select those keyframes. And what's really cool about the Unreal Engine motion design tools is that when we look at these keyframes, we also get this extra little window on the right side of our sequencer. This is gonna give us presets for our animation. And I really do like an animation where it's uh, it's really intense at the beginning and then really eases off. So I think that would be this key option right here. No, not quite. Would it be this one? No, I want the inverse of that, which would be this one. There we go. So now it should slow down, or let's see, what did it do to the actual sequencer curve? Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's getting there, but I wanna fine tune this just a little bit. So I'll go into my transform tool, go into my location tab, find the X value, and I'm just gonna crank this at the very beginning. I'm gonna go ahead and middle mouse button click on this curve right here, and that's gonna add a keyframe, and I'm gonna scooch this all the way over here and adjust this curve. If I hold right click and uh, drag in my curve editor, I can move around and change the view of my curve editor. And let's just go ahead and select this curve, adjust it just a touch so I can get that nice little camera push forward like so. And then I'll go to this last curve, hit control W. That's the extra key bind for br breaking these things. Uh, it's and uh, toggling weighted tra tangents here. So control W and drag this out. Come on, control W. There we go. That's what I wanted. And uh, hold shift to lock the axis of our curve. And then let's just fine tune this so we're not going over that. And I'll just push this where it needs to go, hit control W to break that and drag our curve in. And now we have a cool little animation. We also could theoretically invert this, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just trying to demonstrate some of the tools here. So I will just go ahead and pretend this is our final animation. Now, if I wanted to add a little extra pizzazz or design to this, make it feel a little bit more cinematic, quote unquote, you would do that in the post-process volume. Like I said, in the beginning of this video, the post-process volume is kind of like an adjustment layer. And if you go into the PPV, you can bring down the exposure, collapse that down, and we have all these other properties in our scene that we could adjust. Let's go ahead and add some bloom, maybe. And if we go ahead and crank this value, it's gonna add us 
a little bit of a glow, which is going to look pretty cool. And it's all going to be playing back in real time. Adding something like this in DaVinci Resolve or After Effects might end up taking a little bit more time to render. So this is a cool feature. I will say some of those glows in other software might end up looking better. But if you're trying to do something fast, this is perfectly fine. So now let's go down and we can also add some chromatic aberration. And if you're a traditional motion designer, you uh, will love this effect because this is something that we'll typically add to a lot of our renders at the very end just to take off the, uh, the digital edge of it. So we can add some chromatic aberration and really crank that effect if we wanted to. I'm going to keep it off though because what I will typically do for an animation like this is I will go into my adjustment layer and add a vignette effect. But uh, we don't have a vignette effect, or we do, it's just under this image effects, which is not quite clear in the post-process volume, but image effects right here. Let's go ahead and crank that vignette, and now we get this really intense darkening around the edges here. So let's say I'm cool with this animation, I'm ready to go, we need to render this out to put it in our video. We're going to go ahead and hit the clapboard right here and go to our movie render queue render settings. And then we have our main job right here. It's just called main, which is something we'll work on over the next couple weeks, trying to figure out the best render tools for the motion design stuff. I don't like rendering in JPEG sequences. I prefer PNGs, old habits die hard. So I would just go ahead and add a PNG sequence like so. And I always like to add some anti-aliasing as well. I will override my anti-aliasing as always and set this to eight if I'm doing the super highest quality render settings, but I will retract that and we'll just use one and one for now. That's totally fine. Let's set our output directory. So I'm going to render in 1920 by 1080 and we have to double check one thing. If we look at our avalanche camera actor, we need to make sure that our film back is also a 16 by nine aspect ratio, 1920 by 1080 is 16 by 9, so that's good to go. Let's go ahead and render this to our desktop. So I'll just call this Motion Design Renders, and we'll call this uh, Type Type Animation 001. Click OK, select Folder, hit Accept, and then we will hit the Render button. And now it's going to do some warm up for our frame. And uh, unfortunately, with the new uh, preview version of 5.4, there's this weird little bug and error that I'm getting where uh, it's doing a compile shader for every single frame, which is kind of annoying. So I, I hope they fix this in the very near future, but in their interim, we're just going to let this render. It's going to take me about two minutes. So let's just uh, let this go and uh, render it out. But basically, what we created is this. While we did create a PNG sequence, I did bring this into other software like DaVinci Resolve or After Effects to compile it into a main video. I'm hoping that in Unreal Engine 5.4, the official release, they give us the ability to export an MP4 or I know we can export MOVs, but it's a little funky right now. So uh, I'll have to do some tests. But basically, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of my exploration of the Unreal Engine 5.4 preview motion design stuff. If you learned something, let me know in the comment section down below. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there at comment section is down there for that as well. And if you want me to explore any parts of this in particular, do let me know. I plan on making even more explorative tutorials. But with all of that said, I will leave you with the final tip, and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you'll make some good news. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.